Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another no BS tool review to help you decide if you should buy one of these Makita bandsaws or not. I will tell you right now without hesitation that absolutely 100% you should buy one if you are on the fence about getting one. Now, <clears throat> I will preface this video by saying if you are cutting a lot of tubular material, so up here on my bench I have a few different examples and I will pipe in footage right now showing me cutting some of this stuff but if you are installing tubular material then yes you should buy one you will save a lot of time your efficiency on the job will go up tenfold and you will have way less stress when it comes to cutting things that usually require a hacksaw or a jigsaw uh, or a circular saw, if you, if you try to cut tubular material that's like steel or copper or uh, U-channel metals, um, you're gonna have a much easier time using this bandsaw. You can see from the footage, it cuts through this stuff like butter, like a hot knife through butter, right? That's what they say. Like it just, it the weight of the saw and the weight of your, your arm is gonna bring that saw straight through the material and it's gonna cut it in a very even and fluid motion. So it's not gonna be all jaggy and hacky looking like when it's done being cut. With the exception of PVC, it does like to burn the PVC a little bit. So you do need to, uh, and you should be doing this anyway if you're doing PVC work, you do need to go back and sand off the burrs on the PVC. So <clears throat> looking at the actual tool, this model is the XBP03 Makita bandsaw. It does have a two and a half inch throat on it. So anything that's two and a half inches, you're gonna get into this saw and it's gonna eat it. I mean, it's gonna work. It comes with a Japanese blade by Makita. It's, it's marked on here and I'll show, when I open up this, I'll show you. It's marked here in Japan. It's a beautiful blade right out of the box. You don't need to uh, order an extra blade when you order the saw. Uh, there will be an Amazon affiliate link down below where you can pick one up. I make like uh, five cents off of a sale if you use my link, but it does help the channel and it does give you a quick reference on where to get it. They do have a couple of different models of this bandsaw and I was on the fence, I'm looking at them, I'm like, do I need to go brushless? That one's like 300 bucks or 300 and change. I can go with the non-brushless. Let me tell you something. When it comes to brushless tools and it comes to name brand tools, you do not need brushless. Brushless is something new. It's a better technology. I do agree. It's more efficient for batteries, but you don't need it. It's like, it's like, think about our grandfathers. They didn't have brushless tools. And I can guarantee you that three quarters of their work was better than most of the work you're seeing come today. Those were true tradesmen. They didn't have brushless tools. They, I mean, hell, they barely even had cordless tools. So you don't need brushless. It's gonna get the job done. It's gonna be strong. It's a Makita tool. This one happens to be made in the USA. If you look here at the sticker on the side, it says assembled in the USA. It doesn't have any stampings of made in anywhere else. So I'm gonna go with USA on that. The blade is made in Japan. Up here, it does have onboard uh, Allen key, and this is actually to make an adjustment on the plate, on the backing plate. This is where you put your material up against. You put it down here. That's to make an adjustment there. This little lever up here is just to loosen the tension of the blade. So to access the blade, you turn it around, you depress these in, and lift up the little door. And there's your blade. There's the rollers, nice metal rollers, double rollers, there and there. It rotates on this wheel here and here. And when you loosen off the blade, you just simply come around here, turn this up. That loosens up the tension on the blade on this side. And then you can pull the blade out like this. And to reinstall the blade, take that out. You won't believe how many times people have hurt themselves to get leaving those in. Lift it up, blade, come around here. Actually, loosen that off first. 
This will pull this way and just pull it down. Off the rollers, like that. We got a blade to reload it. Pay attention to your rotation marks. It rotates clockwise, rotation mark on here, rotates clockwise. You put it in the bottom rollers first, just like that. You'll feel it kind of roll around. Hold it in there with your finger. Pop it onto the roller. Make sure it's snug on both sides. That looks good. Go back around to here. Tighten that up. Close the door. Yeah, so that's how you change the blade on it. I just wanted to show some footage of it. I put my little uh, camera holder hat on so you guys could see it. So bottom line, should you buy one of these? Like I said, yes, you should buy one. It's $249. It's not the cheapest tool in the world. It's the price point that Makita likes to keep their stuff of this caliber. Like if you get one of their routers, that's a little bit better quality. You're going to be in the $250 range. They're 36 volt circular saws around this range. So it's one of those, you know, it's not their $100 tool, um, but it's good to have in the toolbox. You never know when you're going to need to cut tubular material. And especially if you're in the trades, you will save so much time going into one of these. There's a lot of companies that make them. I happen to be on the Makita platform. That's why I chose Makita. I'm sure DeWalt's is just as good. Milwaukee's is just as good, but this is just a raw, you know, guy in his garage, practical user of the tool, trying to cut through all the BS of the people that just, you know, they get something, they unbox it, they talk about the stats for 15 minutes and they never use it. They never tell you if it's worth a damn. This thing is, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to just show you guys from a practical perspective if you should get one or not. I actually don't know if I noted this or not. It does have a light right here. Actually, the first time that I used this tool was at night over out in the driveway, and I remember it <laughs> illuminated the material perfectly. So it does also have a lock to keep this, keep someone locked out. Uh, you could do that too when you change your blade, you know. But yeah, guys, if this helped you in any way make a decision, please, please, please subscribe. Please thumbs up. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers, and I try to do videos that are practical, stuff that you guys are looking to figure out if you guys are trying to make a decision on something you know should i buy it i don't know it's so much money is it good is it bad what's it feel like does it actually work that's what my tool reviews are intended to be like so i appreciate you watching please remember to subscribe thumbs up and i'll get you in the next one later